Madam Minister, uh, dear friends, dear colleagues, um, it is a great pleasure for me to uh, welcome you here for what is both a friendly and a solemn occasion uh, when we are gathered to um, pay tribute to Enika Dury's commitment to the European Union and to the strengthening of uh, Franco-Hungarian uh, relations. Everybody here, of course, is aware of uh, your merits, your great achievements, and your great talent. Um, you have had a relatively young career, uh, but I would say of the uh, star shooting variety. So I will not even try to uh, retrace all your achievements, but since we are in a very small circle and among friends, perhaps I could disclose some of the small secrets of the French-Hungarian relationship. Um, nobody, uh, not everybody, I think, is aware that uh, you underwent a training course in Budapest on things European, which was organized by the INA. And I can vouch that anyone that has survived a course organized by the ENA is fit for anything. <laughs> Not everybody is aware that uh, you even did a stint as an intern in the French Parliament. Exactly. And because you are far too modest uh, to show it, not everybody is aware, Shailosh, that <laughs> you have a perfect command of French. <laughs> but those, those, are not the, those are not the merits uh, which we are uh, celebrating uh, today. Um, there are two things, really, that I would like to stress. Uh, the first one is the extraordinary extent to which your career has truly been a European career. You have worked on the Commission, inside the Commission. You have been, of course, a member of the European Parliament. You have served, you are still serving, as a minister on the Council of the European Union. And this, I think, has equipped you remarkably well, remarkably well for your current, uh, current job. Uh, you have, I think, um, what is, to tell the truth, fairly rare on the European scene. You have unrivaled expertise in the sometimes arcane workings of the European Union. You have a dangerous <laughs> efficiency in working out the cogs and wheels of the uh, European Union. Those are probably the skills which uh, have uh, uh, led you to contribute in a very significant part to the success that was the Hungarian presidency of the European Union. Uh, the Hungarian presidency of the European Union was a first for Hungary, and I think it's fair to say that uh, Hungary has far than more than risen to the challenge, and I think that Hungary largely owes it to you. You have uh, uh, greatly served Hungary, and I think equally importantly, you have greatly served the European Union in Hungary. The second thing that I would like to stress, and if you will allow me, I will relapse for a second to French, uh, is the extent to which you have contributed also to the strengthening of French-Hungarian relationships. Pendant la présidence, Madame le Ministre, vous avez développé avec uh, vos homologues français, avec l'ensemble de l'administration française, avec le gouvernement français, une coopération intense opérationnel, efficace, direct, et ce n'est pas trahir un autre secret de la relation franco-hongroise que euh, de dire que vous avez non seulement gagné la confiance de vos interlocuteurs, mais aussi l'amitié de vos interlocuteurs. Those are the major achievements that we are celebrating today. Today, those are the achievements that have led the president. Uh, to award you the uh, highest honor in the uh, French uh, Republic, which I will now award you with. Madame, <laughs> Madame Enique Diori, en vertu du pouvoir qui vous sont conférés, et au nom du président de la République, nous vous faisons officier de l'ordre de la Légion d'honneur. Ambassador Galarag, Excellency.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to receive the National Order of the Legend of Honor. The first words, of course, are those of the gratitude. The gratitude to the French Republic and to all those in France who have found me worthy of this prestigious award. Orders like this are conferred for merits. In my case, if there are any merits involved, then they are certainly shared, shared merits. The success of the first EU presidency of Hungary was due to the dedication and efforts of many in my, but not only in my country. There is, however, one gentleman in France who deserves particular credit for the common success, Mr. Laurent Vaquier, then Minister of State for European Affairs. I would like to ask you, Ambassador, to convey him my best personal regards and gratitude. He was one of the first among our European partners to understand and appreciate those priority goals of the Hungarian presidency that others found unrealistic and, and um, at best, and secured France, France's support for these priorities, even in critical moments. Those issues included the closure of accession negotiations with uh, Croatia and uh, the endorsement of a European Roma strategy, among others. As to the first, skeptics kept telling us from the very beginning of the presidency that it was not customary at all and almost not politically correct to set target date in the EU for closing accession negotiations. And as to the second, naysayers would point out that Roma issues are social policy and therefore a matter of national competence. Why bother the EU? But in the person of Mr. Wokie, France was listening to us as understood. The Hungarian EU presidency does owe much to France and I personally to France and through France to him. Our two countries became close partners in the EU. At the end of our term, Mr. Wokie said an extremely important sentence. With the Hungarian presidency, the distinction between old and new member states has definitely lost any meaning. Excellencies, this statement had a significant significance which goes well beyond Hungary. It was the expression of a credo, a vision of an EU without divisions, double standards, and second class membership. And I have to assure you that our vision of the European Union hasn't changed since 2011. We still believe, as the presidency slogan said, some of you may still remember, it, we still believe in a strong Europe, where strong and equal member states and capable institutions cooperate, in the maximum respect of the treaties, in the spirit of solidarity, and the mutual recognition of one another's identity and constitutional traditions. I'm afraid and a bit deceived that we are now a bit farther away from the realization of this vision than I believe we were two years ago. I become member of the Légion d'Honneur for the role of the Hungarian EU presidency I played during the first semester of 2011. We are together with France to promote the common European cause because there is, after all, a common European cause beyond the otherwise legitimate interests of the member states. When I looked at the list of those Hungarians who have received the order of the Légion d'Honneur, I was filled with eight, I have to say. Kostolányi Dezső, Bartok Béla, Alexander Lánfalusi, just to mention three of the most famous. And I do not claim to share their greatness but I have a belief and ambition in common with them. It is possible for anyone to serve his or her own country in friendship with others. This is an idea to which I want to remain true. So France will always have a friend in me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Sanırım.